Khan Academy, line plots, and we're working on the subtopic interpret dot plots with fraction operations. The plot below shows the volume of 11 river water samples collected by an ecologist. All measurements are rounded to the nearest eighth of a gallon. So these are the separate river samples. Each blue dot is a separate river sample that they got. How many times as great is the volume of the largest sample than the volume of the smallest sample? So here, the largest sample is 7 eighths. And the smallest sample is 1 eighth. Now don't get confused with the sample that there's the most of. The most of them are in the 5 eighths line, but we want the largest sample, which is the 7 eighths. So then it says, how many times as great is the volume of the largest sample than the volume of the smallest sample? So how many times of this would we need to get to 7 eighths? Well, we would need 7 times, because 7 times 1 eighth is going to be 7 eighths. So it's 7 times as great. The plot below shows the amount of time Mira spent on 5 math problems. All measurements are rounded to the nearest fourth of a minute. So here's one math problem, another math problem, another math problem, another math problem, and another math problem. If Mira had spent the same total amount of time, but spent an equal amount of time on each problem, how many minutes would each problem have taken? So the first thing we need to do is figure out how much total time Mira sp spent on her math problems. So here, we have nine and a half, nine and a half, nine and a half. So the first thing that I'm going to do is add nine and a half and nine and a half. Okay, and when I add that, I'm going to get two out of two and 18. So I know that nine and a half and nine and a half, so these two dots together is 19. Okay, then I can add nine and a half more to that. So nine and a half. So nothing plus half is a half. Nine plus nine would be 18. And one plus one is two. So all three of these dots right here are 28 and a half. Then I need to go and I need to add these two. Now these two dots, okay, fall right in between eight and eight and a half, which means if they're halfway between eight and eight and a half, they're going to be eight and one fourth and eight and one fourth. So that's going to be one fourth and one fourth is going to be two fourths. And eight and eight is 16. So the total amount of time that she spent on the problems is 16 and two fourths plus 28 and a half. So this will give us the total amount of time she spent on all five problems. So First thing we need to do is get a common denominator. So I'm going to make this be out of 4. 2 times 2 is 4. 1 times 2 is 2. So 2 fourths plus 2 fourths is 4 fourths. And then 6 plus 8 would be 14. And 1 plus 1 is 2 plus another 2 is 4. So 44 and 4 fourths, which actually is going to be 45. So now that's telling us that she spent 45 minutes total on her math. And it was five problems. So if she spent the same amount on each problem, that's going to be 45 divided by five problems would be nine minutes per problem. The plot below shows the weight of each of 10 female spiny dogfish sharks. 
what is the total weight of the three lightest sharks? So our three lightest sharks are going to be right here. Okay, so the key here is to figuring out what does that hash mark even mean? Well, here's three and here's four. And if I count the spaces in between three and four, I get one space, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That means that each hash mark is one eighth. So this would be one eighth, this would be two eighths, but when we simplify two eighths, it becomes one fourth. So this would be three eighths. So three and three eighths is how much the lightest spiny dogfish shark weighs. So we have to do the total weight of all three. So I'm going to add up three and three eighths. And I get six eighths and six. And then I have to add up that third one. So I'm going to add my three and three eighths. And I get nine eighths. And six plus three is nine. Now remember, with nine eighths, that's actually more than one. So that's like one whole. So eight eighths is going to make that into a ten. And if I took that eight eighths away, that's going to leave one eighth left over. So our final answer is going to be that ten with the one eighth left over. So ten and one eighth. So our last problem, the plot below shows the weight of 14 pumpkins at a jack-o'-lantern farm. Clyde picked the lightest pumpkin and Cohen picked the two heaviest pumpkins. How much more do Cohen's pumpkins combined weigh than Clyde's pumpkin weighs? So Cohen picked these two right here. So that's 17 and 18, so that's right in between. So Cohen's two pumpkins, his one pumpkin is 17 and a half, and his other pumpkin is 17 and a half. So when I add 17 and a half and 17 ooh, and a half, I'm going to get half and half. It's going to be two out of two. Seven plus seven is 14. So I put my one here and my four here. And then 1 plus 1 is 2, and then they add the 1 from before, so that's 34. Okay, so 34 and 2 over 2 is actually going to simplify to 35. So Cohen's pumpkins weigh 35. So I can just kind of write that over here to remind myself that Cohen's pumpkins weigh 35. Clyde's pumpkin is the lightest pumpkin, so that's over here. Okay, so when we look at that, 10 and 11 and there's four spaces, so that means each one of these hash marks is a fourth. So 10 and 1 fourth, 10 and 2 fourths, 10 and 3 fourths. So if Cohen's are 35 and Clyde's are 10 and 3 fourths, we need to subtract to figure out the difference in the weight. And in this case, we can't do nothing, take away 3 fourths, so we're going to borrow and make that 35 into a 34. And then I'm going to bring over my one whole, which is 4 fourths. So 4 fourths, take away 3 fourths, is going to be 1 fourth. And then 34, take away 10, is going to be 24. So 24 and one-fourth is our final answer.